Good morning. I hope my Sunday morning face isn't scaring you, uh, but I want to show you, I'm not going to use any names because I may actually want to uh, post this online uh, because it's kind of an interesting topic. We currently have achieved great alignment of the teeth, as you know, and we've made a great bite correction. Your child has been super cooperative, as you know. So what's left to do? Well, when I click this little thing here, do you notice the green on the upper? The green on the upper corresponds to spaces that remain between your child's teeth. There's one there, there's some there, uh, and we have over here. Now these are small spaces and theoretically they are not hard to close. We close spaces uh, 10 times this amount. But the way we close space is we move upper teeth inward. I mean, the front teeth inward, whether it's upper or lower. You can't bring the back teeth forward because they're in a good bite and they're very resistant to movement. But your child's upper teeth, first of all, happen to be somewhat upright. And the lower teeth are right behind the upper. So that means when Invisalign sent this back to me and I had initially had as a default setting to close spaces, the way they solve this is that we move back the lower teeth as well as the upper teeth so that the upper teeth are free to move back without clashing against the lower. But in your child's mouth, there are no lower spaces whatsoever right now. So Invisalign suggested or programmed to me something that I do quite often when I need to called interproximal reduction. 0.3 millimeters is a very small amount and I would use something safe, harmless, that would remove small amounts of enamel between these lower teeth so that the lower teeth could move inward like that. So we need that space to move the lower teeth inward so that we can move the upper teeth inward. And we're generally programmed to not want to leave spaces between the teeth. But here is where these things get interesting. You know, I've done orthodontics for a long time and orthodontists oftentimes think of things just from a tooth movement standpoint. The reason why your child has spaces at this current moment has nothing to do with the tooth position, it has everything to do with the size of your child's teeth. They are smaller teeth. And so when they're lined up in the proper fashion, uh, there are revealed, the smallness is sort of revealed. In fact, I'll even pop back on how we started here in this case. There were no spaces at the start, but the bite was very deep. It was what's called a deep overbite. If you recall, these teeth were coming down. Look at the progress, how you now see the lower teeth and the upper teeth are not leaning in as much. But if I try to bring them back in further at this point to close the spaces, we're going back in that direction that we started. And so the better way to go, now that I've given it more thought, I know I had given you some options, would be for us to take the upper teeth and consolidate the spaces so that there's no space on the side, no space right in the front, this space is gone but we would leave a 0.8 millimeter space right here and right here. And you can actually notice the shape of your child's teeth. You see how this is slanted this way. It's supposed to kind of come down like this and like this. And that can be done after treatment if you choose by pretty much any dentist, doesn't even have to be a cosmetic specialist. The beauty in this plan is that we do not have to file the lower teeth at all we actually make the upper teeth nudge a little forward, which gives it a better profile uh, and moves them away from the lower teeth so there's less wear. The trade-off, though, is you have to accept the small spaces. And so I think you understand where I'm going with this. Let me know if this plan sounds okay to you and then we can go this route.